Okay, guys, optimization. <clears throat> that basically means that they are going to ask us. It's almost like a little, I almost don't want to say it because you guys aren't, are not going to like the concept, but it's almost like a little word problem. Um, almost where they give you a scenario, a real world scenario, and they ask you to find um, a certain thing that will maximize the profits, for example, or a certain thing that will minimize the whatever. So it's, it has to do with maximum and minimum. Okay, so they are going to give you stuff that you need to maximize or minimize. So guys, what we're just going to do quickly, gonna, we're going to write down the steps. It might not make a lot of sense to you before we're actually looking at an example. Okay, but let's just have the steps and then we'll do some examples. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to set up an equation. For... Um, the quantity that is asked to maximize or minimize. And that is like the word problem we talked. Okay, setting up an equation using whatever information they gave you. What is important here is that we work with this equation and sometimes we might have to manipulate it a bit so that we actually only have one variable. Okay, so that is what we're going to, to do. So I'm gonna write here, try to use only one variable in this equation. <clears throat> Right, sometimes it will be as simple as just rearranging it so that some one specific thing is a subject. You'll see when we're doing examples. Then the second step <clears throat> is to find the derivative of this equation. in terms of the variable, and I'm just gonna write here, you chose to work with, which might sound a bit strange, but sometimes you can decide, you'll also see when we do examples. So guys, if we have a graph, let's just quickly think, because we've just done graphs, right? If we have a graph, are you listening? The turning points of that graph would be the maximum point, the local maximum point, and the local minimum point. Now, how did we find the coordinates of the turning points? We make the derivative equal to zero, All right? We're going to use that same concept here to find the maximum value or the minimum value for these things. We're going to use that same concept. So let's just do a little um, graph there. You can do it next to the heading. All right, that would be our maximum point, our local maximum, I know, but we're gonna use that as the maximum value. And that would be our local minimum point. And finding those two points is almost like optimization, all right? Like finding the maximum and the minimum, basically. And to get that, we would always make the derivative equal to zero. So once we found number two, once we found the derivative here, we're also going to make it equal to zero. That's what we're always going to do to find the maximum or the minimum. All right. We did that to find our maximum and minimum points on the graph. Now we're going to do it in just a different kind of scenario. All right. Now we're going to make this derivative equal to zero.
and solve for the variable. And then depending on what the question was actually asking for, you might need to use this value of the variable in order to answer the question. Okay, so it will be different in all different types of questions. So the last step, sometimes this will be the answer, all right? But sometimes you might need to use this value. So now I'm just gonna say now use this value in order to answer the question. And that will depend on the question. Okay, you'll have to read it nicely. Okay, we're gonna go into some examples just so that you can see. Might only have time to do one today and then I might give you the next one to try at home, but we'll see how we go. I always laugh about this. I'm going to write the whole thing out like it is in the book, but it has some unnecessary information. <laughs> in the book, they even have a little ostrich picture there as well. So. <laughs> Um, and Oh, 400 meters, sorry. <laughs> 40 centimeters. What kind of ostrich is going to fit in? <laughs> so that's the area. <laughs> I remember a few years ago, there was a question in our grade nine exam. I wonder if it was even with you guys, where it was about a crocodile and like the length of the tail or something, something was given was it with you guys and you had to get the length of the whole thing. So many people said like 80 meters, like it was a specific mistake in the question. And if they made that, not in the question, if they made that specific mistake, they got an answer of 80 meters. We were like, guys, <laughs> are you mad with an 80 meter crocodile? <laughs> so no, they're supposed to make sense, the questions. Your answer is supposed to make sense in relation to the question. <laughs> okay guys let's highlight the word area or the words area will be a maximum all right that is very important so they're saying a rectangular den for ostriches is enclosed using 400 meters of fencing and making use of an existing boundary wall okay now that might be a little bit ambiguous but what they mean is that you have like a wall like this and then the fencing is going to be used for three sides of the den. All right. They're not going to put more fencing along the wall as well. Calculate the dimensions. So if this is a rectangular den, they want to know what the length of it is going to be and the breadth. Okay. So that should be our final answer, length and breadth, so that the area will be a maximum. Now, guys, they're telling us that the area must be a maximum. So we need to find an equation for the area of this thing. Find the derivative of that area equation, make it equal to zero, get a value, and then, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, so they're saying that the area must be a maximum, so that is the equation that we need to look, at, look for, the equation that we need to set up. Okay, so if you want, you can do a little, a little diagram. 
okay if you don't want to you don't really have to i'm going to make my wall like this okay there we have a little wall <clears throat> thank you and then there we have our fence on that side and then that side and then that side okay i don't know if that's very accurate but whatever we get the idea Now guys, what you could do, what you might want to do, or what you might have done in previous years, is you would have said length, and then we have two breadths here. But do we notice that we then have two variables, right? If you're using an L and a B, or if you're using an X and a Y, we need to try to use only one variable in this equation. Okay, we're gonna have A equals, our area equals, and then an expression for the area. But guys, you can't have an X and a Y because then in terms of which variable are you going to derive? Okay, you need to have only Xs. Is that fine with everyone? Okay, so now what are we gonna make equal to X? The length or the breadth? The length, all right. Now we need to use that <laughs> and the fact that they've told us how much fencing we have all together to express the breadth also using x, not a different variable. 400 over x, is that gonna work? 200 minus x, let's think quickly. Let's do this guys, let's do this. Let's use a y, let's use a y just in the beginning. Let's do that, okay, chilled, it's fine, it's fine x plus 2y equals 400. Are we fine with that? If we add these three sides together, it's going to use up all the fencing. Okay? And now we must just make y the subject so that we can express the breadth in terms of x only and not a y as well. All right? So 2y, 400 minus x. You will find that so far. Y, 200 minus X over two. Lovely. <laughs> okay, so we are on the right track. Okay, but not quite there. So now I'm just gonna fill that in. And guys, you are allowed to do that. Okay, you can use a different variable and then the information that was given in order to express that only using one variable. So do we see that this is kind of like the word problemy part of the whole thing? Right, we still need to set up an equation for the area of this thing. Now using our, ver our expressions for the length and breadth that only have X, All right? So area, we'll say A, that's fine. We can use a different variable for the name of the equation, All right? Just not in the equation. And how do we find the area of a rectangle? Length times breadth. So guys, in order to derive that, are we going to leave it like that? No, let's multiply it out. 200x minus x squared over 2. Or even easier if we want to derive it, it would be easier if we have a half x squared. Hey, if you write it like that. You don't have to do a whole extra step for it, but yeah, you know, let's do it since it's the first example. Okay, there we have step one done, right? And step one is usually the longest step because you're gonna have to work with some variables. You're gonna have to set up some, some type of equation. Often in TESO exams, what they do is they'll say, say this was question four, they'll say 4.1, show that the area can be expressed using this equation. All right. And then after that, they'll say, now find the maximum, da, 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 da. So that if you can't do this on your own, you can at least use the given equation in your next questions. Does that make sense? So this is usually a show that type of question. Okay, so now that's step one done. Step two, we need to find the derivative of this equation. Now guys, what is the name of this equation? A, what is the variable that I'm using? x so the derivative of a in terms of x and we're going to make that equal to zero let's do steps two and three in one thing 
Yes, I suppose that would be fine, yeah. <clears throat> I just want us to get used to using this, okay, which is why I'm putting emphasis on it. And now the derivative of 200x, 200 minus a half x squared, one x, hey, just x. And that is equal to zero. So what is x? 200. <laughs> I feel like the easier the equation, the more uncertain you guys get. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can see that, yeah. Okay, so x is 200. And guys, what kind of thing is x? x is the length, hey? So 200 meters, we can say that. All right, that's step two and three done. We've now made the derivative equal to zero and solved for the variable. Now we need to use this to answer the question. All right, which is step four. Now, what did they ask for? Calculate the dimension so that the area will be a maximum. So we need to say, what is the length and what is the breadth? Okay, now the length is 200, right? Do we see that? Then what is the breadth going to be? 200 minus X over two. So 200 minus 100, so 100, hey? Therefore, you can write it like this. You can say dimensions are, 200 by 100 meters, that would be fine. I don't know what you mean by that. Or you can write length equals 200 meters and breadth equals 100 meters. Okay, so you can get that 100 in two different ways by subbing the X value into that expression that we have there for the breadth, or because we know that these three all together must add up to 200, oh, three. Oh, 400, <laughs> jeepers. 400, and that's 200, and those are obviously going to be equal. They each must be 100. Okay. Uh, how are we feeling about that? <laughs> yes. The thing is that the area, the minimum area would be, what, zero? So guys, for these questions, they will always only ask for minimum or maximum. And all you need to do, in some cases, they can't ask you for minimum area, right? Because what would the minimum area be here? I, I mean, zero, I suppose. And that's a silly question to ask. All right. So they will always only ask you for one. And then you're going to use the same method. Doesn't matter whether they're asking for the minimum or for the maximum point, because that's what we do when we're finding the graph, say the turning points. To find the minimum or the maximum, we use the same method. All right, and then it depends on what we're subbing those x values into. That expression will give us either the local maximum turning point or the local minimum turning point. Okay, so I don't want you guys to stress about, oh, are they asking for the minimum or the maximum? Sometimes you will get two x values, in which case you will have to sub them in and actually check which one is minimum and which one is maximum and then choose the one that fits. Okay, it depends on the question. But you will always do the same method. You're going to set up an equation using only one right. variable, find the derivative, make it equal to zero, solve for that variable, and then answer the question based on that. Um, why is it given here? Because when we are finding our derivative, we actually end up with a, a linear equation and not an exponential equation, Ugh, not a quadratic one. So if this thing was a cubic, we might end up with two different x values when we're making the derivative equal to zero because it would be a quadratic. But it also just depends on the type of scenario that they're giving. Yeah. Could they ask us the type of question that instead of a flat 3D image, it's a 3D box? Yes. Number two. There we go. <laughs> Number two. There we are being asked about the volume of this box. Do we remember how to find the volume of a rectangular prism? Length times breadth times height. Do we notice that in 2.1 they say, write down the length, breadth, and height of the container in terms of x, all right? So that we have all three of those dimensions in terms of only one variable. 2.2, derive a formula for the volume of the box in terms of x. So you're gonna take your length and your breadth and your height, you're gonna multiply them together. 2.3, calculate the dimensions of the container so that the volume is a maximum. Okay, so I actually think I might have gotten this question from the textbook. Let me just check quickly. Our time is almost up. And then number three, 
we're looking further down, there they are giving us two graphs. Now it printed very badly, but here we have one half of a uh, hyperbola and we have a straight line. Oh, a straight line there. They're saying they want the maximum length of PQ between the points A and B. Now PQ is going to be the Y value of your straight line minus the Y value of your hyperbola. And they're saying at any two point, well, any X value, any points here between A and B, they want the maximum length. So how can we find an expression or an equation for the length PQ? What would you do? What do you guys think? PQ is the Y value of P minus the Y value of Q. Right? Does that make sense? That would give you the length. Doesn't matter what the Y values are, it would give you that length. All right. And now, how can you express that using only one variable? Mm -hmm. Yes, good. So we can make Y the subject here, right? We can make y the subject there because then we have y equals only x stuff and y equals only x stuff. So then the y value of p, because p lies on the square, ugh, on the square root, what am I talking about? Because p lies on the straight line, it would be any, let me just do this quickly, let me just show you because my words are not working today. You would say this negative x plus 12, yes. Right, and now we divide by two, hey. So y will be negative a half x plus six. Now guys, this negative a half x plus six will represent any y value on the straight line, depending on what x is, all right? And here, how would I make y the subject here? y equals two over x, okay? Now, what is the y value of p? The y value of p is negative a half x plus six, because p lies on the straight line and is literally saying y, any y on the straight line is equal to negative a half x plus six. And q would be equal to, the y value of q would be equal to two over x. Now, how can I write an equation for pq? the y value of p minus the y value of q. Are we fine with that? That concept, that number, whatever it is, minus that number. But now we want to write that in terms of only one variable. So we'll say it's the y value of p minus the y value of q. Okay, so literally the equation of the graph that p lies on, is lying on, <laughs> is the straight line. So that would give you the y value of p, regardless of where p is, right? It's on the straight line. So the y value we could get by subbing in any specific p, uh, x value here. And the y value of q, any y value on this graph can be found using the equation because it is y equals two over x. And do you see that we've only used one variable here? We only have x. So this would be the equation for the length of PQ. Now, how would you find the maximum length of PQ? Take this thing, derive it, make it equal to zero and solve for X, right? That would give you the X value where you would have a maximum length of PQ. And then to get the maximum length, if you have the X value of the, 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 X value of the points that will give you the maximum length, how would you get the actual maximum length? You could do that, yes, or you could just have it into the actual equation that we have for length here. All right, but that would also work. You could get the coordinates and subtract them, or here we have an equation for the length of PQ. So if you know at which X value you will get the maximum length, you can sub that X value into this, and it will also give you that maximum length. Yes? Um, if you were, uh, when you were doing the equation, like the F1 Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let me just check where this volume one is. 
because I didn't copy the page from now. I think it was in your te textbook. Every day of my life, I really need to find a better filing system here. Okay, so we are on optimization, which is 228. Oh, it is actually an example in the book. Hmm. Okay, it's fine. I'm going to give you a different one. We can chat about that one tomorrow because it is quite a nice one. Can we all write this down, please, guys? Exercise 9.4. Exercise 9.4. Exercise 9.4. <laughs> I'm waiting. Okay, we're waiting for you. Exercise 9.4, <laughs> page 230. I would like you to do numbers five, six, and then on the next page, so it's five, six, and 13. Five, six, and 13. Five is, yeah, five has to do with volume of a rectangular prism of Euclidean Six has to do with the volume of a cylinder. Do we remember what that formula is? Volume of a cylinder. Remember, guys, the volume of any shape is the area of the base times the height. So, what shape is at the area of, or on the area of, oh, man, what shape is on the base? Of, oh, what shape is the base of a cylinder? A circle. What is the area of a circle? Pi r squared. So pi r squared times height. That will be the volume of a cylinder. My brain is still there. Sorry, it's just <laughs> on vacation, it seems. All right, volume of a cylinder, pi radius squared times height. So you're going to have to use that. And number 13 is a graph question. So let me take a picture of that if you want. Right? So that you have some sort of guidance. Yes, Laura? 2.30, it starts, the exercise starts on 2.30, yes, but the questions are actually only 2.31. Okay, that is for tomorrow, guys. Please, you need to practice this. We're, we're doing two other types of applications tomorrow. And then we're done. And then we're revising paper two stuff after that.